Are you ready to unlock your hidden lotus? Welcome back all you sexy geeks and nerds to a brand new episode of Anime Theory. It's like game theory but better. Well, maybe not better. But we'll talk about Naruto and how maybe you too can one day be like Lee. Ugh. In Naruto, there are three types of jutsus. There's ninjutsu, genjutsu, and the badassest, yes, badassest of them all, taijutsu. But you may wonder, why is taijutsu the best? Well that's because it's not too far from reality. In this anime, there are eight gates within the human body that when open, can provide an enormous boost of strength. The eight gates are the gate of opening, the gate of rest, the gate of life, the gate of pain, the gate of closing, the gate of joy, the gate of shock, and lastly, the gate of death. These gates are meant to open up your chakras, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Maybe another day. Wink. Today I'm here to talk about the effects that the eight gates have on the human body and why I think that's not all fiction. Once using the hidden lotus to activate the first gate, it becomes much easier for the user to activate the remaining gates through willpower alone. When the third gate becomes active, Lee's hair begins to rise, veins protrude from his head, his face becomes red, and his muscles expand. At the initiation of the seventh gate with Guy Sensei, blue vapors extruded from his body and his eyes turn white. Finally, when the gate of death is open, Guy's hair gets longer and turns red, while the red vapor begins to flow out of him. But along with the obvious significant boost of strength that each gate provides, there are consequences that go along with each one. When these gates are activated, a huge amount of stress is put on the user's body. The muscles begin to tear, their bones begin to break, and if the eighth gate is open, then the user is fated to die. So how exactly is this possible? It's not like you see MMA fighters turning blood red halfway through a fight screaming GATE OF LIFE ACTIVATE! Okay, although honestly, like, how cool would that be? But no, I'm not talking about things that have already happened. I'm talking about how the body works, and how someday we just might have someone going superhuman. Looking at the structure of the eight gates, you can plainly see where they are positioned in the human body. Two in the brain, one in the base of the neck, three in the abdominal region, one located around the pelvis, and finally, one in the heart. Something I realized, however, was their position was not all too random, and that the gates that stood out the most caused the biggest effects. Starting off with the gate of opening, it is shown that it coincides with the hypothalamus, the brain's control center for your hormone release. This gland in the human brain is the starting point for almost all hormone production. Then you have the gate of life, the gate that first initiates the major boost of strength, shown to be found over your thyroid, this gland is actually responsible for most human growth and blood production. Some people have actually grown to giant size when this thyroid gland secretes too much of its hormone during puberty. Another gate that shows a major correlation with the human body would be the seventh gate, the gate of shock. This gate is actually located right over your gonads, which are responsible for your testosterone release. These steroids, however, do more than just give you tremendous strength. Testosterone is sometimes even injected into the human body to help a person grow larger muscles that would otherwise be impossible. Lastly, the gate of death is one that is accurately named. Your heart is responsible for more than just pumping out your blood. Your heart can actually manage the amount of blood being pumped out to all your organs and muscles. Through signals, blood can be transported through different amounts to different parts of the body. This will take far too long to explain, but I recommend watching this video which explains the way it works very well. These gates align almost perfectly with the body's endocrine system, a system responsible for most of human growth as well as an enormous boost of strength during fight or flight scenarios. So just what might happen if one possessed the ability to have complete control over the function of his endocrine system? The activation of your hypothalamus and its release hormones would initiate your other endocrine organs. Once they have sprung into action, your thyroid gland would release more hormones that would cause the overproduction of blood cells, making your face turn red and your veins to pop out. These hormones would also cause your metabolism to speed up, supplying your body with an excess amount of energy and releasing heat as a byproduct. 
The overproduction of testosterone would allow your body to go a step even further towards being superhuman, allowing your muscles to expand in size and grow in strength. Finally, with all the extra blood and hormones released in your system, your heart would begin to pump all of it to all of your muscles across your body. And all for only a brief moment. The human body isn't meant for any kind of extreme change, and it is for that reason that we do not have control over our endocrine system. If we truly were able to do this, much like in the anime, the sudden growth in our muscles would cause them to begin tearing, and the pressure exerted by our muscles on our bones would cause the bones in our body to break. The over-release of thyroid hormone and testosterone would cause our hair to turn brittle and weak, and with the amount of heat our body would generate, our hair would begin to rise up over our heads. With all the heat and moisture going through our hair, it would even begin to cause our hair to change color. And you guessed it, our hair would actually change to a reddish color. Finally, with the amount of work and stress on our bodies, along with the drastic increase of blood our heart would have to supply, your heart would begin to give out. And from there, you would have to face the inevitable fate of death. But remember, this isn't anime facts, it's anime theory. To get a better understanding of why this would cause your heart to give out, I would highly recommend watching this video here on how the heart works, and it'll give you a better insight on my theory. I would like to state, however, that I did find this video after I finished writing my script. I was just double checking my work and found this to best basically explain what I was talking about. Anyways, thank you very much for watching my video, and this is your Middle Eastern Geek and Nerd, peacing out.